origin of the guitar show became in fact a point when Danny Thorpe and I began to talk in Waco, Texas about how nice it would be to have a group of people together that liked the same things. We called a friend of Danny Thorpe's in Dallas by the name of Charlie Thor Charlie Wirtz and decided to do a show. I had experience putting on conventions and shows. They knew the dealers and uh, it was a nice marriage to accomplish that fact. We put the first show on in 1978. We had approximately 15 dealers from across the country and the whole show uh, was in a very small ballroom at the best. Uh, it grew from that for the next five years to occupying about 30,000 square feet. Uh, at that point in time, uh, Danny decided to go on the road and play with the band and Charlie and I parted ways and went to two separate shows. From that, we now have a strong spring show and a strong fall show. Okay, I guess in 1984, uh, even though I had supported John at a couple of other fall shows uh, back in the early 80s, in 1984, Dave Crocker and myself decided to uh, throw all of our resources behind one show to, uh, in order to attain a uh, well-oiled uh, show that, that uh, we could work a lot of the kinks out of and make it good for everybody. So in 1984, we joined with John Brinkman to uh, try to improve and perfect the show operation and we've, we feel like we've done just that. It's becoming a great deal. Uh, when we started doing shows five years ago as a team in Tulsa, we had about 50 exhibitors, I think, and uh, you know they might carry 20 or 30 guitars, 40 guitars. Uh, we see guys now that, that come in with 100 or 200 pieces, and uh, uh, it's better stuff. At this show, uh, conservatively, probably 7,500 guitars when we opened the doors. The public probably carried in another three or four thousand. So uh, there is no other. There's no other place in the country at any time when you can see uh, this many guitars that are for sale or for trade. So a lot of uh, a lot of the major buyers come in and do their shopping. My name is Tut Campbell. I'm with Dixie Guitars of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, uh, how many? Uh, is this the first time you've ever come to this show? No, this is about the fourth or fifth time that I've been here. But um, the first show in 1978, when they had it here in Dallas, was uh, the first uh, time that I came. I came to the first couple of shows, and then I didn't come for a while, and then now I'm back again. And about to tell you something, it's a big change between now and what it was 10 years ago. How so? The size as well as the international market. Um, the first show that I came to was held in a place not much bigger than a typical classroom size high school classroom. Four or five dealers, four or five booths, a couple hundred people browsing. This thing's in an auditorium about the size of a Kmart shopping center and certainly has a lot more than four or five dealers, probably 50 to 100 dealers and thousands of, uh, of browsers and many of them international. So it's, it's a remarkable how, how well it's grown in the last 10 years as well as the, the sophistication of the buyer. It used to be 10 years ago you'd have to explain to a person what the instrument was and why it was worth this or why it wasn't worth this. Uh, now that many times the, the uh, consumer knows as much if not more than the dealers. Joe Perry of Aerosmith uh, owned it and recorded with it and it's pictured on several Aerosmith albums. Later Eric Johnson purchased it and the gentleman who I bought it from bought it directly from Eric Johnson. Uh, Eric is one of the famous guys here in Texas. My name is Danny Collier from Garland, Texas. And I'm Hoss Huggins from Tyler, Texas. And, uh, Danny and I, we make nearly all the Texas shows, but Danny goes all over the country uh, to bluegrass yeah, festivals bluegrass too. Yeah, bluegrass festivals. Because he handles mostly acoustic instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of mine are electric. Oh, no, this, is, this is probably my fifth or sixth time to come to the show, but it's only the second one to actually have a booth here. Yeah. I've got everything from 52 uh, Les Pauls to, uh, you know, 52 Stratocasters and Telecasters. So we've got a little bit of everything here. And what, Danny's got some of the greatest Martins I've ever seen, so he's really a Martin man. I think it will grow as more people become interested in it. I think you can parallel the vintage music business somewhat with the vintage gun and automobile business. Uh, it started out very similar. 
Uh, now there are several large shows of that caliber across the country. Uh, we have major clubs formed uh, that collect Packard cars, that collect uh, Cadillac cars. I think in the near future you will find uh, clubs of people who collect Gibson guitars, that uh, collect Fender guitars, that have common interests, that get together and uh, do things of a common nature. Oh, I think I'm probably labeled a jazz collector. I like the construction of the big jazz bodies. If I have a favorite, it's Heritage Guitar, the new model on the line, it's definitely not vintage. But it's made by craftsmen who've been making guitars for 150 years and has all the components of a vintage guitar. I'm Eugene for Eugene's Guitars here in Dallas. We come to all the shows because we always do great. We sell from rock and rollers to country. We sell anybody that wants to buy a good guitar. We specialize in better guitars. We sell a lot of vintage. Uh, we sell a lot of normal Fender, Gibson, and stuff. Um, show's been great. Yeah, show's been great. Done we well. had a great time. A lot of out of seas buyers. Yeah. They bought a lot of stuff. A lot of normal people come out and buy. We love to swap and trade. We love to just buy guitars. We uh, we try to do all we can at these yeah. shows. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> we do just as much at home. Not as much in one day, but we buy a lot of guitars out of our shop, so we love people to come by and trade us. We just soon trade as cash. My name is Dave Winch, and the company is Robin Guitars out of Houston, Texas. Okay. Right now, I believe we're the only uh, Texas manufacturer of electric guitars, and if I'm not mistaken, the uh, only one ever of any type of production facility. Uh, one of our main lines we're doing right now down there is another custom TX, which is a neck through the body carved arch top when guitar. Uh, incredible amount of handwork going into these guitars and our price range uh, from $900 to about $2,500 on these custom made Thank guitars. Uh, we've opened our little factory back there about a year and a half ago and uh, we're just incredibly pleased with the quality of work we're turning out and glad to be uh, a Texas made product. My collection is relatively small. I collect uh, nationals. All three of these were picked up here at the show this weekend. Uh, I basically like uh, steel body round necks, but I, uh, I also collect amplifiers from, from guitar companies, obscure amplifiers. Uh, the, we're a, a, a sole proprietorship, a uh, small business, and so actually, I mean, they're all our collection. And, uh, but the stuff that doesn't, that never leaves is uh, the Nationals. I just don't, I don't sell those. I think they're, uh, uh, they, 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 ha they intrigue me more than anything else in the business because of where they came from. Uh, I like all of them, but, but I'll sell anything to get a national. I feel blessed in this because I get up and go play every day. Uh, it was like if I hit the lottery, everybody else would have the money and I'd, I'd have more guitars. I'm Strings West. I started the name Strings West back in the mid-70s. I started business in 1970, back when the vintage guitar business was actually just a, a young pup, so to speak. But uh, in 1976, I changed the name to Strings West, and Medium Rare Guitars is, is a logo that I just, uh, it's sort of halfway uh, tongue-in-cheek, and uh, I go under Strings West as my main business operation, but Medium Rare Guitars is what I carry in all my magazine ads and what have you. Uh, we're completely diversified. We uh, uh, Vintage electrics are big for us, uh, acoustics, Martins, Gibson arch tops, lap steels, lots and lots of amps. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh huh. And we like I say we've been in the business for 19 years and uh, have made a lot of friends, in lots of places. It's more or less a a, a sickness, just so to speak. It's like old cars. It's like guns. You know, any gun will shoot, but an old Winchester Model 21 is a prize. An old Strat will play. A new Strat will play. We feel the old Strats uh, have a certain uniqueness to them in, in the quality of the sound and the playability. Plus, what you spend this year on a guitar for a, uh, something to work with will be worth more next year, hopefully. Uh, there are some advantages. We feel the workmanship in the old guitars is much better. And uh, given the choice, uh, myself and most of the others would, would take an old guitar. My name is Tom Whitrock. My store is Third Eye Music. It's in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I de deal in nothing but used guitars, any age, but I specialize in late 50s Sunburst Les Paul Gibson, the cream of the crop of Les Pauls. Okay. That's my specialty. Why is that? Why is that? I, I have always been personally attracted to that particular piece and have been a collector of such, 
and I find the easiest way to be a collector of a very expensive guitar is to deal in used guitars. Okay. They uh, seem to be easier to find when you're a dealer and easier to afford or trade for if you're in the business of dealing guitars. I'm Bart Whitrock from Rock and Robin Guitars and Music in Houston, Texas, and we're glad to be here at the guitar show today. We're having a good time. How long have you been doing this? About 16 years. Yeah. What is your particular special? Uh, Koa ukuleles. Like those okay. little ukuleles. This is a handmade in Hawaii ukuleles. My personal opinion is the best guitar show ever. I think that uh, there's more people walking through here buying guitars, more people selling guitars. Uh, generally good attitudes, the after show entertainment, the meals and hotels, everything's just been great. Hey, how you doing? Gary Hernandez, Guitars West, out of San Diego. Got a bunch of guitars here. Bunch back here, and what else do you want to know? <laughs> well, you want to know how long you been doing this? About two years I've been doing this. Strictly vintage, nothing new. Probably 65 and under. Giving this piece away right here into the show Sunday to the lucky winner for the $2 ticket. I do it as a hobby. I own two other corporations in San Diego, and I just do it for fun, basically. Yeah. You go to not a lot of other shows like this? Yeah, I've been to a lot of other shows, but this show has been probably one of the nicest I've been to. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Anderson with uh, Dave Anderson Zoo Music. We're located in Dallas, Texas, and we have uh, been in business about 10 years. And we carry vintage as well as new. Just a good mixture. Amps, drums, full line. Yeah. And uh, we, when we come to the show, we kind of take a little different approach. We like to bring uh, some affordable items. We have so many, I think, uh, young musicians coming through that see the expensive guitars, they can't afford them, they want to go home with something new. So we bring some affordable guitars as well as a few of the uh, vintage models and higher price too. So. The Texas Guitar Show 88. It's been described by the press as the Guitar Commodities Exchange, the Vintage NAM Show, and the world's most convenient show. This year, and with good reason, the event was characterized as the richest show on earth. Collectors, buyers, and exhibitors from all over the world traveled to the Arlington Convention Center in Arlington, Texas to be a part of America's largest guitar extravaganza. It all started at 6 a.m. on Friday morning with pre-show setup. By mid-morning, participants began registering and arranging their individual booths. Here's Doty and Ruth, the ladies who manage the paperwork, answer questions, and keep everything running smoothly in the main entrance area. By 5 p.m., the VIP buyers are allowed on the show floor for their chance to examine and make their offers on thousands of guitars displayed at this year's show. Saturday begins at 8 a.m. as exhibitors are admitted to prepare before the show's 9 a.m. opening. The public is encouraged to bring their own instruments to sell or trade. They are also given a $1 discount on admission. These guitars are tagged before they're allowed onto the main floor. A guitar lover's paradise. The main floor holds guitars from every manufacturer and every date imaginable. From the rare vintage to the new and not so rare. In the past, amplifier manufacturers have not attended the show. This may change in the future. Many exhibitors also buy, sell, and collect vintage amps. In addition, many brought other collectibles associated with the industry. Very nice. Get $75 a month, $70 a month, $75 a month. I got a case with a shaky. One of the many highlights of the Texas Guitar Show is the daily auction. These guitars are sold on consignment. The maximum fee for selling any guitar is only $50. I don't think so. No, that's right. That should be right there. It, it may have been reset. It's the right type of bridge going the right direction. These are right. Next year's show will be bigger and better. More guitars will be photographed for the second edition of Guitars, 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 the Pictorial Guitar Reference Manual, as well as for George Gruen's upcoming book. The 1989 show will also be extended to three days in order to meet the public demand. With more contests and the largest dealer jam ever, the show will continue to grow by leaps and bounds.